Okay, sorry about that. I had to start over a little bit there. I uh, ran out of memory card space on my uh, recording device. Anyways, just gonna start again gentle, starting at 13 amps. And uh, but this time I'm just gonna jump to 18 amps and hold it there for a minute or so. And then I'm gonna go to 22 and so on uh, until this fuse burns out. So uh, here we go. Yeah, it's pretty cold out here, so this uh, will definitely I'll put a little bit more power than otherwise possible in normal ambient temperatures. It's probably around um, two or three degrees Celsius. Okay, so we're still nowhere near burnout point. So let's boost that a little bit more. Now, the cabling that I'm currently using does have a limitation of 32 amps. I can go higher than that, but it's going to take a little bit of effort in terms of uh, rewiring a few things. And I don't think I'll be able to do that today. It's going to take a lot of time. I really don't think this thing will go to 32 amps, actually. And I just noticed something. I got a red light lit up. What the hell does that mean? I'm at 242 volts. 21 amps. I just noticed that light come on now, so I wonder what that means. Here, I wonder if I uh, if I turn down the amps, will that light turn off? Oh, let's try it. It did turn off. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, well, let's <laughs> let's call it an idiot light for now, and this is kind of a warning to say that I'm overdoing it a little bit. But how can I be overdoing it? This is a 15,000 watt inverter. How could this be? This doesn't make any sense. Let's keep going. This went really slow there because I'm watching for that red light to come back on. So right now I'm doing 19.5 amps, 242 volts. There's the 242 volts. 19.5. No red alarm. I got, let's see if this shows up on camera or not, 84.8 to 106 amps coming out of the batteries. And all the batteries are 22.8 volts each. So that's going to be 0.8 times 2 times, let's say 106, 4.8. Still no red LED. I wonder where that came from. So, if this said 5,000 watt inverter, that would make a little bit more sense. And it kind of does say that, but it's really hidden and not very obvious. And I find that very misleading and disingenuous and essentially dishonest of the supplier to, uh, to do that to customers. Which is why I'm really pissed off while doing this. But hopefully that makes this more entertaining. So let's get going with this. That's good, that is very interesting actually, they have a very accurate view. So my opinion of this so far is that this is an excellent inverter that, that's rated for maybe 4 to 5 kilowatts. This is a very good 5 kilowatt inverter, not 15 kilowatt, but you know what? I was told this thing could do 69 amps, so I'm going to keep pushing it. You know what, I wonder 
if that's beeping because I have low voltage on my batteries. Let's see, my batteries are 22.7 volts each. That's a total of uh, 45 volts. Hmm. 45 over 4. So like a 12 volt lead acid battery. It's 11.25 volts. Oh, what's this? Shut down. What? Why would it shut down? It's a 15 kilowatt inverter. Alright, let's stop this recording so it just because the beeping is really annoying here. Okay, we're back on. I just had to shut it off to uh, stop that beeping. Let's see if I turn it back on. Ah. Huh. Seems okay. What happens if I uh, take that fuse out of there? So I got a battery fuse and an inverter fuse. The battery fuse, I'm pretty sure, is just for charging the batteries. This does feel a little warm. Oh, the fan's on. The fuse is melted. Like it's, I don't know if I can get that on camera. It's not, I don't think it's blown. Let's see how it's sagging down like that. It's pretty, pretty toasty. That's, you know what, that's essentially exactly what I expected. Let's put that back in. Come on. There we go. And let's put this back on. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's try something different here. Let's look at this screen. And so let's see what it says when I'm ramping up the power. Okay, here we go. Let's crank it. 
I uh, just forgot to add one more thing. I did mention that I would explain at the end what my test load is. Uh, you may have seen this. That's a hint if you uh, recognize that. Let's just follow this wire. It goes to this plug. Oh, what does this plug do? Well, there's a big, giant, fat ass hint in your face. That's the Tesla. I was using this as my test load. This has a dual charger inside of it. It's power factor corrected. It uses 240 volts. It can go anywhere from, I think, as low as 8 amps all the way up to uh, 80 amps. So I was uh, adjusting uh, on the dashboard how many amps it pulls, starting around 12 amps, because I know that inverter can definitely do 12 amps. Uh, but again, that's not why I bought this inverter. I didn't buy this inverter to charge that from battery packs. That wasn't the point at all. That I bought this inverter to theoretically power the house off of solar panels or wind turbines or whatever, right? That's the whole point of having split phase, right? Split phase is, has 120 volt, 120 volt and a neutral that combines them. So that way you can get, you can power your ex existing circuit breaker box with both. Now, if I can't run my air conditioner, my furnace, uh, my dryer, and, and maybe the electric stove, that was optional. I can maybe get a gas stove or something. But mainly the air conditioner itself. The air conditioner is the only 240 volt device on the entire thing. If I need to run that on a separate inverter, I might as well get a 240 volt inverter. And I don't even need this to begin with. Why would I pay extra for a split phase inverter if it's not going to power the whole house? So, yeah, thanks for wasting my time, PowerJack. Okay, okay, let's get this uh, video wrapped up. This is the manual that came with the unit. I have the 15,000W, uh, I guess it's a model number maybe unit here's the specifications for the unit just to make sure i got the right page here it's only about the fifth page in beyond this is the european one i have the north american one it does 110 and 220 60 hertz uh it has some other features like charging the batteries and things like that which are nice but it's not why i bought the unit i bought the unit right here output power watts the different models i have the highest one 15,000. So you'd expect it should be able to do 15,000 continuously, not triple uh, its actual rating or something like that. And so below is some other very good uh, technical information. Uh, which is, this is what convinced me to buy this, because these guys really sound like they know what they're doing. There's just one little flaw in that uh, they, they're not honest with, uh, with what it can do. Now, they have a very confusing chart here. They've posted this a couple times on their other inverters. The guy that I bought it from didn't really have this on his website, and it's not really clear what this means because they have fluorescent light, halogen lamp, blah, 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 all these different appliances and a, rate, a power rating. So I was like, is that for each power rating? And who is going to have a 5,000-watt fluorescent lamp? That makes no sense. This chart is useless. At the very top, it shows the power rating, right? Type slash spec. So I have the 15,000W unit. And it shows these numbers here. Now, what if I were to reinterpret this, I would say that this is actually a 5,000 watt inverter. And they've derated uh, certain things here because they are inductive loads with a power factor or a very large surge rating, like the grinder here, not over 2,500 watt. Nobody has a 2,500 watt, 240 volt grinder. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not talking about a chop saw. That's a hand angle grinder, it's handheld. This chart doesn't make any sense, but it, it alludes to something that does make sense if you really look into it and do the research, uh, which is kind of impossible unless you buy one and try it out for yourself. So what am I going to do with this unit? I don't know. I, I still can't really decide. When I'm cleaning everything up, I'll think about it. But uh, for now, thanks for watching.